Okay, so let's uh, see how um, how this kind of shape that you see happens. So um, so this is the mathematical derivation of um, how this standing wave happens. So um, so let me describe the mathematical form of these functions f1 and f2. And what I will show is that the resulting mathematical form naturally can be described as what you are seeing here. So I'll get an expression for f, and that will look exactly like what you are seeing on the screen. So um, f1 is going to be traveling periodic wave. Uh, what we described here. This will be the form of F1. So one of the two waves that add is a wave that's traveling to the right. Um, that has some angular frequency omega. So given some wave speed, it's going to have some wave number that's associated with its actual wavelength. So that's F1. That's equal to some amplitude times sine of kx minus omega t. And uh, so th this is the wave that I'm generating from this oscillation source. There must be a second source of wave that I'm going to be adding to this. Uh, where is the second source of wave? Hmm. I, I mean, if uh, I have a single source of wave, then it will be like a traveling wave that should just uh, move off to the infinity. There's one more source of wave. Where's the second source? on this physical demonstration. That's yeah, so this is the, you know, the place where it reflects. One way to describe reflection is that when the wave reaches this point, it becomes a wave that's traveling from right to left. Um, that has otherwise the same properties as the original wave. So let me write down an expression for that um, second wave. It's a, a wave that's, a, well, sorry, I need to reserve a little more space for myself. So F1 is A sine of kx minus omega t. And the second wave that's coming from the point where I'm holding is equal to A times, um, all of the properties will be the same, same amplitude. And I can even keep the same sign. So sine of k, I can keep the same wavelength because the frequency of oscillation is the same. So it'll be same kx. And this is the part it's going to be different. Instead of being minus omega t, it's going to be plus omega t, which will be, so this describes a wave that's traveling from right to left. Do you see that? Yes. Yeah. One way to see is that as you increase time t, to keep this quantity kx plus omega t constant, so you're trying to track the wave at the same point in its cycle, as you increase t, x has to decrease. That's uh, why this describes a wave that's moving from right to left. Okay. So, um, all right, so let's write down what f is using wave superposition. f is equal to this plus this. So I guess I can factor out A. A times sine of kx minus omega t plus sine of kx plus omega t. All right, so you look at this expression and think this does represent what I see on the screen there. Yes? For most people, that won't be the case. Like, it's very unclear how this relates to the shape that you're seeing there. So let me go through a little bit of uh, trigonometry to rewrite this in a way that you can relate it more easily to that shape that you're seeing. So this is where you need the trig identities that I've mentioned several times this semester. This is the most useful trig identity that I, that I know that a lot of people forget. It's the angle addition formulas. So the one I'm going to use here is the sine angle addition formula. Sine of alpha plus minus beta is equal to sine of alpha cosine of beta plus minus sine of beta cosine of alpha. But let me write down the other one too in case you need it in the future. Cosine of alpha um, minus plus beta, sorry, uh, let me write down the usual way. Alpha plus minus beta is equal to 
cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus plus sine of alpha, sine of beta. This sounds familiar? If you don't have it memorized, you have seen it before at least? Yes? Yeah, so let me use the first trig identity to rewrite this. Because I can clearly see that this is my alpha, this is my beta. So I can use that to rewrite it, see what happens. So the combined function is equal to a times, let me rewrite this, sine of kx times cosine of omega t minus sine of omega t times cosine of kx. All right, that seems complicated. Let me write down the second one. Uh, plus sine of kx times cosine of omega t plus sine of omega t times cosine of kx. And this is where you see something magical happen. You see these two complicated terms canceling each other out. And when you look at the remaining term, they are exactly the same as each other. So this plus that is just double the one of them. So when you simplify all of this, this is what you end up with. That this function f here is equal to 2 times a and this. Sine of kx times cosine of omega t. Now does this represent the shape that you are seeing? Yes? Yeah, I mean, look at it. So imagine fixing the time. Freeze the time at any time. So that uh, uh, at any time, that's not where cosine of omega t is not equal to 0. Then what you see is that you get a, the remaining term gives you something that's sinusoidal in shape. right? And it's always in such a way that the beginning point is at 0. And you know, wherever value of x is, so the sine of kx is, or kx is equal to you know, some multiple of pi, the sine of kx will be 0. So this is where kx is equal to pi, you know, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. Yeah? And now, imagine stepping forward in time. As you step forward in time, whenever time value t is so that cosine of omega t is 0, then your displacement everywhere throughout the wave is at zero. And as you step forward further in time, so the cosine of omega t is not zero, but like minus one, then you get the flipped over version. So this function almost exactly describes what you are seeing here as a function of time. And this is how you derive the mathematical form of the standing wave. It's nothing more than addition of two addition of the two traveling wave, the one that's traveling to the right and one that's traveling to the left, that has the same amplitude, and you go through a little bit of trigonometry and this is what you end up with. It's a very simple um, simplification, um, on, but you know, not one that's uh, necessarily easy to get, at least until the first time you see it.